Hey, good morning. My name is Dave. Welcome to the Living Lightly channel. All right, today we are going to look through the 12 volt monster. All right, it's a 100 watt solar panel on a mobile cart. So it's got pneumatic wheels, it's in, <clears throat> it's got a battery pack, charge controller, inverter. So everything is uh, at least weatherproof. So let's take a closer, detailed look at the 12 volt monster. Okay, first it was put inside of a crate. The crate was um, ordered a wood-burning stove and for camping, and it came in uh, that crate. But I put the crate on some good, uh, you know, two by four and two by six scraps I had, so it has a strong frame and then kind of a flimsy you know, this is a little bit flimsy. I'll try and reinforce it, but really what matters is the frame that the pneumatic wheels go in. The pneumatic wheels came from Harbor Freight. This wood was scrap and pallets. This was an old, well, a, a crate that uh, something came packaged in. So you can see, we'll start from the top. So you'd see I, I put a, an old lantern, found it at the thrift store, got it for like 50 cents. So this is probably an outdoor lantern, so it's pretty weatherproof. And inside, I don't know if you can see it, I have a 12 volt bulb. So it does not need an inverter. It runs off 12 volt which means it would be the same thing, the same uh, type of light that would run in your car. So your car is a whole 12 volt system. So I figure, <laughs> you know, why not use the same logic as an automobile has? All right, right here, uh, this is just a, a little solar lantern. So in the middle of the night, you know, you'd be able to see what's going on in here because this light is kind of see the solar panel kind of blocks it so even when that light is on it's still kind of dark down here so I just put in this extra small guy all right let's take a look at the guts well uh, let's go back up So in that lantern, behind it, I had just scrap piece of plastic, covered it. I mean, you could I could have used conduit, but I kind of wanted, I had this tube laying around, so I used it. And I kind of wanted to see maybe if there was condensation on the inside, I want to be able to see it. So I think it's fine. It's working fine. But there was condensation getting in it. And so I had to cut a tiny hole, yeah, down here. So if any water drips, it'll come out. So I put a piece of PVC tube. So if water came, you know, rained, water came down, it couldn't go up into the cooler. It would just drip, drip right down and out. Right here is also a 12 volt floodlight that is not hooked up yet. And I kind of put this here to rest your phone on it if you need it, but I need to take that out because it's just, it's just collecting water. All right, here is the 100 watt solar panel. Which was just under a hundred dollars. You figure if you want to buy solar panels, a dollar a watt. The details of solar panels are on back. So this one runs how many amps? Yeah, five amps maxed out. So this also has that tube, runs inside. <clears throat> now on the inside, 
yeah. These are uh, disconnects. And I just kind of put some plastic washers to hold the wires secure and apart so I don't get short anything out. So if I need to take this whole cooler, the battery and everything, disconnect it, bring it inside or for whatever reason, it would take about just a few minutes to disconnect wires, you know, unscrew that little quarter inch screw, quick disconnects, pull the, pull the tubes, you know, back out and I can just pick up the cooler and travel. So the first stop for the electricity is this charge controller. Right now it's reading 13.9 volts. And, well, 14, yeah. Uh, when it gets down to about 11, 11 volts, you know your battery is about dead. But this is a deep cycle battery, so it can go dead maybe 20 times, maybe 30, and still bounce back. So that's why we use deep cycle. Um, so it goes into the charge controller because the charge controller is going to protect the charge going to the battery. It's going to limit the charge going to the battery. If just this was continually charged, um, you know, it could melt. I don't know what happens exactly to a battery if it's overcharged, but it's not good. So this protects the battery also has a couple of DC outlets right here but I added a lot more because I want a lot of phones charging all at once so out from here goes to charge the battery um, and then from the battery oh let's talk about well this let's talk about um, batteries for a second a few different types this is a lead Oh, this is not a lead acid battery. This is a gel battery, so it's sealed um, because I wanted it weatherproofed and I wanted it low maintenance. They are a little bit more expensive. I got this used, so it was pretty cheap. But this is the lowest maintenance battery. Not necessarily the best, just the lowest maintenance battery. So it can be outdoors and uh, around people who just don't want to mess with the battery yeah that's for you then we're drawing power off of the battery which it could be done from the charge controller way around and back I can't get down in there but I before when I was setting it up I had a charge controller that didn't have a power output so I had to draw it from the battery and the battery these cables go down to um, see if we can see it that fuse box down there it's like a little car fuse yeah. and then from the fuses from that fuse box down there it goes to these DC power ports. So I have really, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have these six power ports. One of those power ports is being used by this inverter. I believe it is a 400 watt inverter so we can power that on and then you can have AC electricity as well but the inverter will take maybe 30 percent of your power the bigger ones have fans running through them 
and that those fans will drain your battery over time or at least a little bit it'll be a draw so this stays off until it's absolutely needed if you just keep that on it'll drain the battery let's go back over here one of the appliances from the fuse box go to this switch and the switch is just like your household switch which goes back up into one of those tubes yeah. and now the light is on that is the equivalent to a 60 watt bulb so at nighttime it's fantastic All right, so that is a creative solar project. Solar generator, able to go anywhere. And, you know, hopefully these basic ideas can help you even, you know, put things into your home. Like, you know, my house is run, you know, runs like 13 of those light bulbs. So the whole house runs off just a, a couple of panels and a couple of batteries. So thank you for watching, uh, subscribe, uh, like, and stay tuned for more, uh, more ideas on living lightly.